Two weeks back, production on Star Wars Episode 8 was announced with a short teaser video of director Ryan Johnson shooting a scene with Mark Hamill and Daisy Ridley. Since then, specula- speculation has pointed to Episode 8 being the first Star Wars movie to pick up directly after the end of the previous. MTV caught up with Ridley on the red carpet at the Academy Awards on Sunday night, where she seemingly confirmed the idea, saying, Me and Mark Hamill have been rehearsing a lot, and it's really amazing. When we went back to Skellig to do the opening, of eight it was so crazy doing the same scene with a different crew of people he's amazing to rehearse with and i'm very excited to be doing the rest of the stuff when asked if luke skywalker would be involved this time ridley added it's such a good story seriously luke is so cool in this one really episode eight will debut in theaters december 15 2017 shinep do you like the idea of episode eight picking up directly after episode seven absolutely not i think it's horrible no i love it <laughs> i can't i cannot wait that ending was like <gasps> no luke didn't even get to say anything so i'm glad that they're going to pick right up where they left it off and i'm really excited to see the 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 next episode see where uh, Johnson takes it he's a great writer I love all his films so far I love Looper so I'm all 100% on board for the continuity to just rock on and you know what they could always do is it could start right there and then cut to like the credit crawl and then four years later yeah. so she could be in training and all this other stuff they might pick up where they left off but it could also then jump forward in time so it makes total sense to me but it does beg the question like okay after we get off the island we see that opening exchange with her giving him the lightsaber and then they have some sort of conversation where do we go from there are we picking up those events or are we going to do a flash forward mm-hmm. from there look I'm going to be cool with whatever they they want to do with these movies but this one unlike previous star wars films seems to make the most sense where you have to pick up right where you left off because like take the the end of the empire strikes back phenomenal movie it ends with luke putting his hand over leia's shoulder and it's like all right we got to take some time we got to lick our wounds i don't care what happened the rest of that evening you know i I didn't need to know that i can pick up a couple years later or a couple months later however long it took for them to get a tatooine to go rescue han this is a totally different situation this is a dude we've been waiting to see what he's been up to for the last three decades and we finally got one picture of him at the end of a movie and he's about to say something and then boom credits Mm. there was no after credit scene so we have no idea what's going to come out of his mouth we as fans deserve to see what luke skywalker is like right when we meet him we don't want to read it in a crawl text like we don't want to the worst thing episode eight could have done is open with the crawl text like luke and ray have been hanging out for a while and she's getting in really good shape no we need (laughs) to see this from the beginning but it's also great to see that daisy ridley is saying how cool luke skywalker is in this movie christian rumor on the internet says that you're kind of a big star wars fan you read this what were your thoughts well the first thing is that when we talked about this on jedi council is that they went back to skelly michael island a while ago so because it's it's hard to film there so they had to get permission again to film back there. in so, september yeah so they had to get permission to film there again so the chances are that's when they filmed this and ryan johnson has been in it for that long to get both Luke and and and, and Luke and, and Ray together to do that scene before the movie even came out. So you know he had already seen that scene and to shoot it again because that's why they were able to kind of I guess pick up on it. So it was, a lot of people think that that happened when whenever they released that thing it was about a month ago. Yeah. It didn't happen a month ago. Right. But the fact that we are we have never had a Star Wars movie that has been directly from one scene to another. It's always been a time lapse. I think episode right. one was like ten years and then three or whatever, whatever it was. So this is nice to see it continue. I agree with you, Schnepp. I think it's very possible that if you wanted to, you could do that. We gotta find out what they say. What does she what does he say? <laughs> Everyone wants to know what the hell happened there too. Because I think that you would be doing yourself a disservice if you just jumped and didn't show them at least have some kind of conversation. Now whether or not they reveal who the hell she is to him in that conversation as the dad, a teacher, whatever it might be. Something has to happen in that conversation because it's, the lead up was for so long. You know what he says? He says, do you have any food? Right. There's no food. Right. There's just nothing. Nothing. This island. nothing. I haven't and, eaten for and 30 that, years. What's that gravestone there? That's yeah. creepy, dad. Um, so, yeah, that, that <laughs> it's right. They've been hanging out a lot together. It could yeah. be good father, it's, daughter, yeah. bonding time. But she just other, starts shaving him. Oh, I'm, yeah. trying, I'm trying. It's like Encino Man. We just got to throw him in a bath and yeah. get this thing cleaned up. I'm also wondering, like, it, it, has a Star Wars movie ever, I'm trying to think, I've seen the movies a few times, have they ever in the middle of a movie jumped from like one point in time to another one even if it's like a week later i think they've been pretty 
continuous as far as the story unfolding. You know, maybe it took a little bit of time for Luke to finally get to Dagobah in Return of the Jedi, and then for him to finally leave Yoda's disappearing carcass and then come back and hang out with the rest of the Rebellion. Well, but for the most part, it's a pretty streamlined storytelling. You look at Empire Strikes Back, he's at it, studying with Yoda for, yeah. a, 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 you know, not just one day. He's training with him. So time elapses. So yeah. we don't know how many weeks have elapsed, but it's not just a day and then he takes off. He studies to be a Jedi. So it's probably a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah, it's definitely a couple weeks. I mean, because that's you assume that's how long that Han and Leia were in Cloud City. They were there for a little bit, too, before, you know, they got... Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Unless we get into Orlando. Orlando. Anything else yeah. that happened yeah. in the original trilogy. But, but as far as Luke um, being a part of it, this is what we were talking about. because, And she also knows, Daisy really has been very good leading up to episode seven of what she can and cannot say. There is a reason that she was talking about Luke to MTV or whoever it was. There was a reason because she's allowed to. Mm -hmm. Luke is going to be the heavy marketing material here. He has to be because if you don't have him in this movie a lot and you don't tell everybody Luke is a big part of this movie, people are going to be pissed off. So for her to say he's really cool in it, great. I know you're excited about that. Christmas two years from now cannot come. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.